Hi, I'm Chuck Fishbein, and welcome to Shoot Like a Pro. So, just what is the film look? The term is constantly referred to when discussing cameras, lenses, lighting, and a great deal of accessories. But what is it? And why is it so sought after? And why do we call ourselves filmmakers when we're working in video? In the not too distant past, it was much easier to obtain the film look. You just used film. Everybody did. The nightly news, commercials, the corporate interview. And if your mom or dad wasn't shooting with it, they were sitting on the living room floor watching the film look your grandparents created. When video became available to the masses in the late 70s, the resolution was fairly poor. Its range was anything but dynamic. But it was much less expensive than film and was quickly embraced. Of course, one part of the film look is the film itself. Film has both a texture and a grain and allows for a wide range of exposure to be recorded on each frame. Yet, there are several techniques that will bring you very close to film when using video. Shooting progressively, regardless of frame rate, has a more inherently cinematic look than shooting interlaced. Setting your camera to 24p and maintaining a shutter speed of a 48th or a 60th will closely mimic the frame rate of a motion picture camera. This is a good place to start. The slower shutter speeds will allow moving subjects to have a slight blur, which will be interpreted by your brain as motion, not fuzzy images. If you're working outdoors in bright light, use the camera's built-in neutral density filters or add an ND filter to your lens or matte box to help lower the light level, which will allow you to use slower shutter speeds. Gamma helps control the contrast and dynamic range of a scene. When you're watching the news on television, you are seeing an image that is fully saturated with color, solid blacks, and maximum detail. Compare this to watching a film on the same television, and you'll see that the colors are generally more muted, the contrast is much softer, and the range of light to dark is much wider. Some of Sony's cameras have cine gammas in their profiles, or, like the EX1 and EX3, have different degrees of standard or cine gammas. Other cameras, such as the NX30 or FS100, have cinema tone settings that will in part achieve a similar effect. This is a subject that deserves its own tutorial, and I'll be discussing this in depth in future videos. But for now, go ahead and explore these settings on your own and note how each setting affects your final image. There are also filters available that can help manage the look and feel of your final image. Low con filters will lower the contrast of an image without reducing its sharpness. Warming and cooling filters will add subtle shifts in the mood of a scene. Slight diffusion filters can soften a scene, helping to create an emotional response, and graduated ND filters will aid in balancing the difference in exposure between your foreground and sky. Next is depth of field. Depth of field is affected by both the size of your camera sensor and the aperture or iris of your lens. Larger sensors, like those in the F3 and the FS700, will provide a much narrower depth of focus, especially when the lens is used at its widest opening. The more you close down your lens, the more objects will be in focus in your foreground and background. It may be more difficult to obtain a soft background in cameras with smaller sensors that lack ND filters. This can easily be compensated for by adding an external ND filter and or backing up from your subject a bit while using the telephoto end of your lens. Of course, the decision whether to use shallow or deep focus is yours and should be decided by the mood of your film, not by the type of gear you're using. The movement of the camera is also important to creating a successful film look. Although terrific film shots can come from a static camera mounted on a tripod, often the use of camera movement can make the viewer feel like part of the action and add emotion to an otherwise ordinary scene. The basic moves like pans and tilts can be achieved using your tripod. A dolly shot is used to move the camera in towards and back away from your subject, adding drama, intensity, or even comedy. The same move from side to side is often called trucking. Jib shots, also known as boom or crane shots, can elevate the camera from ground level to high up in seconds. The effect can be quite dramatic. 
A stabilizer will help your camera glide fluidly through a shot, making it seem like a participant in the film. Stabilizers come in all shapes and sizes. Some are as simple as a T-shaped rig, and others, like the fig rig, are round, while yet others incorporate vests and an array of springs, gimbals, and weights to balance your camera. Available in sizes and budgets to suit almost any camera or production, a stabilizer will add significant production value to your project. Finally, one of the most basic ways to involve your camera in the scene is to hand hold it or to use a shoulder support. Then you have freedom to move anywhere within the scene. Any one of these techniques will eventually become tiresome on your screen, so use them when they're most appropriate. One of the best ways to learn how to use these tools and techniques is simply watch your favorite movies. There's a fortune in movie making education available on your home TV. Notice all the subtle and sometimes not so subtle moves that are an integral part of the film look. Use that as a guide and then create a look of your own. If you have any additional questions or comments, contact me at this address and I'll do my best to answer them. Until then, I'm Chuck Fishbein, keep shooting.